Hey guys, it's your best five friends. I'm Kelsey, that's Rachel. Rachel, two pretty big fights are being targeted for December and January. The first one in December would be UFC welterweight champion Kamaru Usman taking on Gilbert Burns. That's the fight that should have already happened, but Burns tested positive for COVID. Right. And in January, the rematch between Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz for the BMF title, baby! Tell me, why, why do people, like, love Nate Diaz so much? So as, like... Because he's quite lovable. A writer in the... We know like, Nate Diaz is a big baby. But yeah, if Kelsey writes something about Nate Diaz, like, everybody wants to read it. Like... <laughs> yeah, well, people love Nate Diaz because he's authentically himself. You know, he doesn't try to act like anything. Yeah. And they love the way he fights. And if you can combine those two things and be good at what you do, people are going to love you. Yeah. That's why people love us, Rachel. What? <laughs> but yeah, he's really popular. He's also really, really fun to watch fight. He's also very, very good. You know what I mean? At what he does. And if you remember, we'll jump ahead to that fight. The last fight, um, that fight was stopped because of cuts around Diaz's eye. I've seen way worse cuts. Mm. Probably people were really mad at that fight. They, they went and see the rest of that fight because while Masvidal got off to the early lead, that's pretty common in Nate Diaz fights, right? Nate Diaz usually comes on strong as the rounds go on. So I do love that fight, yeah. the rematch. Anytime you can get Nate Diaz in the, ring, in the octagon, I'm all for it. Anytime you can get Jorge Masvidal in the octagon, I'm all for it. I can't wait to see that fight. It's, oh, it's oh, it's super necessary, Rachel. Goodness. I can't believe it right. takes so long to get super necessary in there. <laughs> Let's talk about Usman Burns. Yeah, so I know that right now, Burns is just all about how do I move my feet around so I don't get my feet stomped into the ground by Kamaru Usman. And people say it's a joke, but that's, that's, it looks like it hurts. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good move. Well, yeah, I was watching a fight. It wasn't a foot stomping, but it was, it was calf kicks. And oh, like yeah. somebody made a joke about like a, a knockout by calf kick. Oh, it ha but wasn't so, a joke. <laughs> but like, it's not as, like, flashy, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> but, like... But it works. Yeah, like, it's... it's What you're doing is you're breaking your opponent down. Yeah. And whatever way you can do that, you're going to do it. So yes. it's like the equivalent in boxing of body punches. You're going to go with the body so that you can break your opponent down, and then you're setting yourself up, perhaps, later in the fight... Oh, yeah. For a much easier knockout than if you just targeted just for that just going knockout trying. by and the head punch that, the and whole night. Moro Usman's great at what great fighters do, which is great fighters do what they're great at. They make the fight what they do. And so Usman is tough. He's a hard puncher. He's a good striker. But his game is wrestling. And he can get you up on that fence and kind of controls you. If he can stomp on your feet, if he can pummel you down and, and you know... We saw him in the Colby Covenant fight where they both just stood and traded. And it showed what kind of striker Usman really is, how good he is at it. He's got real power. But his game is that where he dominates with his wrestling. He's really great at it. Nobody might beat this guy for a long time. But I'm anxious to see the next man up. That's Gilbert Burns, who's been on a tear, who's put together quite a run in the UFC at welterweight. Deserves a title shot. And now he gets it. And I can't wait to see the fight. And Rachel... What does that mean for the future, though? What maybe are they setting up? It would seem like they might be setting up a rematch between Usman and Masvidal. Yeah. Should they both win their respective fights? Because in that giving Masvidal, right, a full camp to prepare for a fight against Usman. Yeah. And so... so you got to think that Masvidal is going to be favored. Both fighters, I think Usman will be favored in his fight. And Nate... Um, Jorge Masvidal will be favored against Nate Diaz because he won the first fight by stoppage. And because it looked like he was winning that fight when they stopped the fight, right? Yeah, but you never know. Like, I mean, people oh, thought well, Tony Ferguson you never, ever know. No. <laughs> would win over Gagey, right? And yeah. that's not what happened. No, and, and the UFC is great about, like, upsets happening a lot. That's what makes it so fun to cover and so fun to watch. Yeah, so neither of these fights are a sure thing nope. for either guy. And so it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. Um, but, really? yeah, I'm interested to see Masvidal because I haven't gotten a chance to see... Uh, Masvidal fight They're outside of him fighting Usman. Because you just started watching Because I just UFC. started watching UFC like okay. let's say around January 2020. So we did, but we did watch did you not watch it with me? Usman, I mean uh, Masvidal versus Diaz? I probably didn't. You went into the other room. Yeah. You missed a heck of a fight <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> yeah, so I'm UFC really interested to watch it. So my only, what I have of Masvidal is what he brought in against Usman and what I saw was 
actually, in my opinion, something similar to Ferguson, which is I came in with plan A and no plan B, C, or D. Well, like not being able to adapt. Yeah. But and he so, also had six days notice and had to lose like 25 pounds. Yeah, it just, here's my concern. Okay, hear me out. Also, he's fighting his mind pretty great. <laughs> right. Here, here's my concern is that sometimes I see a fighter get into the, the ring or the cage, right? And they they kind of like have their plan and then they're like something changes. Like their plan doesn't work and they almost like freeze. It's like the equivalent of freezing. Like a guinea pig. It's just like, well, it's more like a, a robot. Like, like I don't have the program written to operate in a different way. And so I just, I don't know what to do now. Mm. I thought I saw like a little bit of that with uh, Masvidal against Usman, and that concerns me. Now, just to play my own devil's advocate, hey, people are putting their their bodies, their lives on the line here. It's a lot for me to like be like, hey, Masvidal, just try anything. He's like, you know, I don't want to get killed in here, so I'm not going to just try anything. And that may be what I'm asking, and that's too much to ask. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see a full fight. I feel count. like Masvidal in that fight particularly, like, he had a good round one, and then he was tired because he wasn't, he didn't train for the fight, right? He hadn't been training the way you would Eating train. Eating pizza over in Rome. Well, he <laughs> wouldn't. That didn't matter. I'm saying he I hasn't know. been training for, like, the 12 weeks that he would have if he knew he really had a fight. I know that yeah, he said yeah. he was staying... Training, but there's a difference there's between guys. Mean, like I'm staying in shape you, we versus go to like all the time. I am training yeah, for a specific. It's different. Fight. You yeah. train differently. Yeah. So I look forward to seeing that fight. I mean, I don't, I don't know if Masvidal can beat Usman after seeing the first fight. Usman's pretty great, but these are great fights. I'm really grateful for all these great fights, particularly in the UFC, especially during 2020. Because without it, Rachel, we will be so bored, <laughs> bored and broke. <laughs> really, let's be honest. We will be bored and we will be broke. <laughs> It's very true. So great. Well, we don't that. we don't know the future, so I will just say What's we don't know what future? would have happened. You mean the so past. I can't guarantee that I would have been bored or broke. That's all that I'm saying. Okay. It would have been different. I'll give you that, Kelsey. It would have been different. How do different. you know that it would be different? <laughs> if there were no UFC I'm playing Rachel's advocate. It's just <laughs> it's it's already different. But is it? No UFC. Define difference. We just had a whole thing right, about words I'm, and I'm symbols. Done. I'm done here. But hey, uh, what's our... Uh, if you're still here, <laughs> go ahead and watch our show more. Like, comment, and subscribe to Real Talk with Kelsey and Rachel. I'm Kelsey, that's Rachel, and we're the Real Talker people. Okay. <laughs>